welcome to another video. Purple Political Talk here. And today we're going to be looking at the 2020 presidential elections as well as the races for Senate and House. And answer a big question. Is this democratic momentum that we're seeing right now, is that going to turn into a wave or just a little push for the Democratic Party? So we're going to answer that in this video. But before we begin, I want to remind you guys to please like and subscribe and turn on post notifications so you guys are up to date to our latest videos in our channel. So let's get started. So first thing we have to do is define the term wave. So there's realistically no real wave, um, a, a definition for the word wave when it comes to politics. I mean, but there is a general definition that a lot of people throw around. So a lot of people say it's a certain number of seats um, um, taken over in the in either chamber of Congress or winning a popular vote by somewhat of a margin. So for this, I'm just going to um, analyze them a lot differently. So I'm going to explain them specifically for what we're talking about, which each of the elected um, parts of government. So. First thing we're going to look at um, to just kind of feel what the co-census is right now. What is Donald Trump's approval rating and how this generally could affect. So right now, I mean, Donald Trump is a little unpopular. I mean, compared to past presidents. So only he, he's only approved by 41.2% of Americans compared to 54 who disapprove, him, disapprove of him. So generally speaking, a 13.6% um, net disapproval. So that is not amazing. And... I mean, it's also one of his, um, he's like, that's his average throughout his presidency, been in the low 40s throughout his presidency. So, is this, like, super bad for him, or can he still be elected? So, I think right now, Donald Trump still has a chance to be elected, but, I mean, if anything is to tell, I mean, these numbers are not great, which kind of signifies one of the first steps of a wave. Usually, when a wave happens, it's either because, one, there's a very popular incumbent, in this case, that's not happening. Or two, um, so if, if there's a popular incumbent, the wave would be in the incumbent's favor. And if there's an unpopular incumbent, it would be against him. So right now, I mean, the Republican Party, generally speaking, has been sinking and sinking and sinking. We're going to see specifically why in this video. But I mean, this is just one example of how the Republican Party has been sinking. They were doing pretty good mid-March. I mean, after the pandemic, Trump's approval rate ratings rose. Only he was disapproved um, only net minus four, which is... The high, highest during his presidency, except, like, the first three days, which I don't think count. Now, I mean, this is just an indicator, and we're going to look at other indicators to ask, answer our questions. So, is this a um, a wave? So, first thing we're going to um, answer, look at our latest polls for, these are the generic ballot polls. So, this would be, um, if you were to vote down ballot completely, which party would you vote for? And I want to show you guys, I think there is a very um, interesting trend. All of these polls, except that one outlier, have Democrats ahead by at least five points. So, these elections, I mean, being ahead by five points in a generic ballot is pretty good. I mean, consider that Hillary Clinton, was, she was only ahead by what? I think her generic ballot was around three to four points. The Democrats, in this case, Joe Biden's ticket, um, and other Democrats down ballot, plus eight, plus eight, plus eight consistently, plus seven, plus nine. They don't have an average. Um, nonetheless, I mean, that looks very good for the Democrats. I mean, since the Republicans are not gaining much anything, I mean, their generic ballot is down. It's negative compared to the Democrats. I mean, that is not good. And for many people that do um, say that waves are around a margin of victory in a popular vote by around 10% nationwide, I mean, 10, like anywhere from 8 to 10%, I mean, that's where we're seeing average ballpark right now. 6, 10, 8, 8, 8, 8, 7, 9. Um, so that is ballpark what we're seeing right now. I mean, and if generic ballot is a way to tell if there's a wave incoming, um, that is going to be interesting to see. And I mean, honestly, at this point in time, um, we're going to have to be able to tell, I mean, what type of um, voter trend out there will be. I mean, yes, when there's a poll, I mean, people could say, I'm going to vote, I'm going to vote, I'm going to vote. What ends up happening is that some people don't go out to vote because either they, they say I don't want, they don't have time, they just don't get excited to go out and vote, or it makes it super difficult for them. So that's the thing we're going to have to answer before we can definitely like answer, yes, a democratic wave is coming, or no, a democratic wave is not incoming. But I mean, these trends and these polls, I mean, consistently, for yesterday, July 29th, July 24th, July 23rd, th these polls are 
simply showing what the Democrats are ahead by. So, I mean, nationwide, generic, where um, Senate, House, everything included, Democrats are being, they're up right now by about plus 8%, with that just one outlier um, that's below 5 for the Democrats. So, that's our first um, thing, more thing we're going to look like. Now, let's look at some latest U.S. Senate polls. So, generally speaking, a lot of these Democratic races that, um, except, like, races in Democrat slash swing states, for the most part, except Georgia, because it's a weird primary system, um, right now, oh yeah, but then Purdue and Oslo. So yeah, that's another interesting thing to see. But what are we noticing? Very big amount of um, blue polls, except in the state of Georgia. And then South Carolina took a poll, which this doesn't look too great for Graham if this is actually what's happening. So we're seeing in a lot of races, South Car- in North Carolina. So um, North Carolina, in Michigan, in Colorado, in Arizona, in Maine, all parts of the country are trending Democratic. So again, there's another thing. There is... Democratic waves in one certain area, and there's Democratic, um, there's a Democratic wave nationwide. So we're looking at na- Democratic wave nationwide. This just keeps on telling us that the chances of a Democratic wave are very high, just because of the fact that the most net results in most states have Democrats ahead, which again does not paint a good picture for the Republican Party. So when it comes to polling, I, I pull these up just to show you guys how they've been consistently trending democratic but i really want to focus it on focus on focus on the three jhk forecasts so the house the senate and the presidential forecast so we're gonna go through each of one and talk about the signs of waves and stuff like that so here first of all the forecast i mean 97.6 chance of keeping the majority for the democrats that looks very good for them and that's not by itself an indicator of a wave but this is going to be what we're going to be able to see what is an indicator. So, first of all, this is a great indicator of the wave, this graph. So, this shows the possibilities of certain house outcomes happening. I want you to notice something. So, right here, this this line right here is the majority by just one seat. So, this should be the median if it was evenly split. So, this should be this round. Because, again, we're seeing statistically a bell curve. So, a bell curve in statistics is... Generally speaking, like results will always be around the same um, or symmetrical um, once you split the graph through its median. So this sh- this this black line should be right here to make the the, the, sen- the the house the house forecast completely even, but it's not. This shows that the, the majority line is actually further back into the Republican column, meaning that Democrats have a huge chance of carrying this um, the house. And what are we noticing here? That the chances of Democrats gaining seats are quite high. I mean. Um, if they stand almost equally, I mean, and Democrats could have a super majority in the House, whether it's, like, 260 seats. Right now, they're currently at, if I'm correct, 233 to 202. So, I mean, gaining 10 seats would be pretty good. And I think just considering how big of a wave 2018 was, gaining a couple seats is somewhat good for them. And this Jeshke forecast about the House, so I haven't made one specific about the House. I really do want to make one to talk specifically about them. But I think one big thing that we're seeing here is that there is kind of an even amount number of competitive races. Um, and actually, there might be more Democratic races that might be a little bit less competitive. But looking at the races filled in right now in the black circle, I think it's a pretty even number. So, I mean, the chances of a very big change in the House are somewhat low. But a wave is certainly um, possible considering that some of these people um, and some of these congressmen may win the races um, they won in 2018 by larger margins. So this is the graph of the chances and stuff. And we see Democrats going up. And I mean, that looks very good for them. Average seats, I mean, they've been going up for the Democrats some. But I mean, with the average seats, it's hard to tell just because, I mean, they don't change that often. And they change by like less than a percentage point. But as of lately... Democrats have started taking a lot of more average seats. They got to a point where they're um, leading 234 seats, so that would be picking up too. So, I mean, again, it's a little hard to tell. So, and the popular vote, um, Democrats are just carrying that a lot more. So, if we're looking at popular vote, we're starting to see and getting to the point 7 plus plus 7.8, which is essentially what a lot of people do, a benchmark for a house wave. And that's actually really good for the Democrats. So, this is going to show us all the races by their states. So, for example, in a state like Alabama, there is one Democratic seat, a ton um, Repu- uh, Republican, so they're not going to flip, right? Um, so, 
just looking at this graph, there is no states where there's a lot of house races that are competitive. And what are we seeing in the middle? So I want you guys to look between here and here. Some of these states have a lot more Democratic seats in the middle than the Republicans. And that is something interesting to watch. And that really does not um, help the Democratic Party. So this is our JSK forecast for the House. And I mean, it generally shows that Democrats have somewhat of a strong hold on these House races. And they're expected to win a somewhat large amount of the popular vote. So that's the House forecast. The Senate, what about in the Senate? So are Democrats expected to carry a big amount of the Senate? So generally speaking, I want to look at this graphs because it's the most accurate when it comes to telling if there's going to be a Democratic wave. So, I mean, a Democratic wave, I would say, starts after the game 52 seats, the average prediction. So I, I think at, at this point in time, a wave is sort of like a best case scenario, but where the whole country votes together, quote unquote. So right now, 53 plus seats for the Democrats in Senate is a blue wave. And the chances of that happening are quite high. I mean, compared to a, a Republican wave, which at this point in time would look something like 54 or 55 seats, I mean, they look somewhat more plausible. And as you go down, the more number of seats, the less likely it gets. So that's going to be an interesting thing. Right now, this has the the, the number of seats even. But I think, honestly, um, the average seats, I mean, they've stayed the same because there's so little of them. So, I mean, Democrats are increasing number of average seats, which does help their chances. And then here, I mean, chances of taking over the House are, are a little bit closer than the... Um, the or no the senate is closer than the house so that's something to note so i mean generally speaking the, the wave is going to be just a lot more democrats picking up seats and a lot more democrats everywhere and i mean the presidential race shouldn't be a question i mean this map looks a lot more blue than it definitely should i mean this map should be a little bit more red if we were talking about an average election 269 269 would be the map but in this scenario i mean joe biden is just outperforming all the metrics which this enthusiasm for anti-Trump voters might really just light the wave. So if 2016, if a lot of people consider 2008, um, 2018 a wave, when I feel like it was a wave in the House, definitely, but in the Senate, no, and there's no way to tell the presidential race. But I think, honestly, th this year is seeming up to seem a, a very big year for the Democrats. And I also want to mention something else here in the Senate. I mean... I think it should look pretty bad, and they should be in pack of waiting for like a wave. If the Democrat, the, the the Republican majority leader in the United States Senate is telling everyone to distance themselves from Donald Trump and his side of the GOP, which that does not paint a good picture, and I think that shows that the situation might not be as good as um some people um would um think. So right now, I would say the presidential race. I mean, it's also pretty much a blowout at this point. Um. 346, that's some of the highest it has been over the last couple of um, days. We're actually in the last couple of presidential elections. Popular vote has completely gone off of the 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 margin where Donald Trump could actually win. So but if there's purple in the middle, that means Donald Trump has a chance of victory in the popular vote. So that's not looking good. And the, pop, the electoral vote, it does give Trump a chance with his majority being less than 236 electoral votes. So we're going to have to like see what ends up happening with these forecasts. And I think answering your question, is a blue wave coming? Mm, would I say it's coming directly? Maybe not. I mean, this is very strong polling for Democrats and very strong forecasting for the Democratic Party. But again, would I call it a wave? Probably not. I mean, this has wave potential. And honestly, I think that it really does. I mean, just looking off the House and Senate and presidential levels, but keep this in mind as well. Usually, the biggest waves come before the presidential year. So, in 2008, it was in 2006 when the Democrats carried House, Senate, and they gained a lot of seats. Um, in this in this case, 2018 was somewhat of a wave year. So, generally speaking, they'd just be continuing the wave. But just looking at the popular vote in all the races, it's looking very good for the Democrats. And I mean, a Democratic wave might be incoming. We're going to be able to uh, detail those things as soon as we get more information, how the auction will be held and all these different things. Generally speaking, Democrats are doing exceptionally. So if you take that as that is a wave, then that is a wave. Because, I mean, again, I, I mentioned how it's very um, very different um, depending on who you talk to, what a wave is. So I hope you enjoyed the analysis. I mean, it was a little short, I guess. but um, And I hope you guys understood what I was trying to say. 
And if you did and you liked the video, please give it a huge thumbs up. Like and subscribe and turn on post notifications and to get notified when I post my next video. I hope you enjoyed the video and I know you guys did and goodbye.